Hi, I'm Tony Allen Bernier, and today I'm going to talk about the Weaver 8-ton clicker press here. I'll tell you maybe some pros and cons that I found. I'll tell you why I chose this over other clicker presses, why I chose it over their 4-ton press, and maybe even a little bit of math. I'll also be telling you who the winner of my instructional DVD set is. I did a giveaway with one of my last videos. So if you want to get in on some of these giveaways that I do every now and then, sometimes I do some free patterns, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell. That way you're up to date and you can maybe win something. The winner of my DVD set is Lynn Salem. Congratulations, Lynn. So the eight ton clicker press from Weaver. I did a lot of research before I landed on this model. I don't take purchases lightly, especially when they're bigger ones. A couple things about it first. Turns out they make it in-house in Ohio and offer a limited lifetime guarantee. Both of which are nice, but don't really have much bearing on whether or not I was gonna get it. I've been using it for a bit now. I punch out mostly brim inserts to go with the cap patterns that I sell. I also punch uh, leather tags that I add to a lot of the stuff I make, like my caps. First, I'll go over the pros and why I went this route. They're in no particular order, but for me, a couple of the bigger points were the fact that I was able to move it with a buddy. We use lifting straps, mind you, and we did take the top off the base. It was still pretty heavy. It might have been a good idea maybe to get three people, maybe even four. But once it was in place, I was able to kind of rock it back and forth and move it pretty easily on my own. If I had gotten one of the automated versions, I would have had to hire a company to move it into my shop. I wouldn't have been able to move it around at all after that either. I believe those weigh like 1,500 pounds or something. The 8-ton press here from Weaver I got was around 350, I think. Might, might have been a little more. The other point I really liked was the safety level this has over the bigger, more expensive ones. I have kids in my shop often and didn't like the danger inherent in the other presses. I actually let my kids use this one. The footprint's pretty small, 24 by 32 inches, actually maybe even just a hair smaller than that. And that isn't even considering the backside tapers in a little bit. I can really only think of a couple cons, one of them for me anyhow. The lack of the satisfying sound the automatic ones make when they come slamming down, I like that, but I don't know if that really makes any difference to you. The lever is up over the top of the machine a little bit, so you do have to reach for it a little, which wasn't a deal breaker for me at all. I actually thought maybe clicking for a couple hours might give me a little bit of a workout, but no, actually pretty easy. Like I said, my kids can use this thing, no problem. Having to do the clicking manually might slow you down, however, after I got going and had a good rhythm set, I really didn't notice much of a difference. If you're going to punch out parts for several days straight, you may want an automated press. The time might add up, I don't know. But this thing works really nice. So as far as a little bit of math and why I went with the 8-ton press over the 4-ton, first and foremost, it's more solid and I'd rather have overkill than not enough. But the force produced is spread out over the surface of the plate being pressed down. So if you did the math, you would divide that by the actual square inches or whatever. And the four ton plate is smaller. I actually had a conversation with a friend about them not being that different since the eight ton press's plate is bigger. His thought was that you would have the pressure spread out more over the surface area. And after doing the math, they're not all that different as far as force per square inch or what have you. I thought about it for a second and argued that since you'd be using the same size clicker die, it would still be different. My thought was that the pressure wouldn't be spread out over the entire surface area of the clicker plate. It would be concentrated to the dimensions of the die itself. So you would have to divide the dimensions of the die you would be using, not the full area of the clicker's plate. We didn't go into tests or anything like that, but it seemed to make sense to both of us. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful. I'll throw the link to the press down below so you can check it out if you want. I will say I bought this press I'm not sponsored by Weaver or any of that. This video just covers my opinion. And yeah, I would definitely recommend this piece of equipment. Thanks for watching.